could you tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. Um, well, it's not too exciting. Um, a little bit about myself. Uh, I was born uh, in the Midwest, uh, just north of Chicago. Yeah. Um, and again, just started cooking at a young age. Uh, not really interested in cooking, but more interested in, in just have, holding a job. And um, over the years, um, at that one job for, for four years, uh, it, it developed into more of a passion. And I was um, gracious enough to have uh, people surrounding me that not only wanted to see me succeed, but also wanted to teach me. Yeah. And I mean, we often had like knife throwing contests and it, you know, it wasn't the most professional places, but uh, uh, you know, f going from peeling carrots to um, garmage to grill the saute to saucier, it was, um, it was definitely apparent that we were uh, elevating um, through all of our shenanigans. But um, uh, at that point, you know, uh, I was also studying architecture and engineering, and uh, in my mind, that was going to be my profession. Um, but through my development in uh, just a standard job, uh, one of my sous chefs said, you know, you should consider culinary school. And I said, what is that? You know, I had no idea. Um, just completely blind to it. Um, and I was fortunate enough, my mother was a travel agent, and uh, she booked a flight to upstate New York to see the, the CIA, the Culinary Institute of America, um, which is a gorgeous campus. And as soon as I stepped foot on it, that was uh, the place I wanted oh, to so see. It. <laughs> that was it. And then from there, um, it was just head first into culinary arts. Um, traveled around the country for many years, cooking under many different chefs in many different capacities. Um, in many different cuisines uh, and it was always exciting um, but it came to a point where I got burnt out and I think many chefs do um, mm. and I left the kitchen and I moved to Napa and I studied wine and got a degree in wine and started making wine and uh, that filled those voids um, but ultimately I was missing culinary arts so now back to the kitchen for the last several years mm -hmm. with an uh, accelerated palate and um, mm -hmm. now just uh, combining all of those efforts mm -hmm. uh, and just trying to maintain the balance uh, and I think that's hard for many chefs um, and it's something you have to work at but that's, uh, that's where we're at. So. Did food play an important role in your family? Uh, I wouldn't say food of any um, of any pedigree played an important role. Food was always uh, something that brought us together, but it was never um, fine dining. It was never beautiful wines. We didn't uh, make pasta first thing in the morning growing up. Uh, but food always brought us together. But did you did you experience it as something that was important for you to have these meals with your family? I did. I did. There was a point where we could all come together, and you know, through busy days, I think that's awesome. And I think it's kind of a classic Midwest uh, upbringing. You know, it's very family oriented. Yeah. And I think that kind of upbringing also plays heavily into hospitality. And for me, um, I think, and and many uh, chef friends would disagree. Uh, I think for me, hospitality is more important than the culinary arts. And I think the best service can save the worst food. <laughs> and the best food can never save the worst service. Um, so I think, you know, after a lifetime in this business, it's, it's really about hospitality mm -hmm. and culinary arts and beverages. It's a combination. Mm -hmm. But growing up, I, I couldn't identify that. But it was a good basis or foundation for Hospitality. How old were you when you started your career, and um, <coughs> what did it mean to you, to you when you entered the chef's world? I was 14 uh, when I started my career, and um, yeah, it didn't mean anything. Uh, I got a job with my friends, and uh, we were hanging out, probably like drinking beers on the job hanging out in the kitchen, and, and that was it. Um, How did it click? When did it click? Uh, probably about a year into it. 
because I started to excel at it. And not like creating masterful dishes, but um, before cooking, I was working in the garage and helping my father and grandfather build out homes and just very kind of handy with mm. my hands. So it was very natural uh, to just work in the kitchen. And, you know, a lot of people I've worked around, they're like, oh, you know, you're, you're, you're fast and you're good. And you seem to have a natural development for this. And again, it wasn't masterful dishes or beautiful balance. It was just um, just working with your hands. Yeah. So I'm really happy that we came to this market, especially in the very building, because it is truly kind of the center of uh, San Francisco. Yeah. So the beauty of this market is beautiful. Is your camera proof here? Oh, Hi, hey, how are you? Thank you, Anya. Thank you, ladies. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Nice Look to meet you. Look at you. Amazing people. <laughs> we'll see you next time. Bye. Thank you. Saturday. See you. Look at these. Oh, oh my God. This is beautiful. <laughs> Be more beautiful with your flowers. <laughs> you know what I'm saying. <laughs> Bye, ladies. Bye. What made you open a restaurant in San Francisco? That's a good question. I think um, I think we could have opened a restaurant anywhere. Um, I feel like the combination of produce that's available and the um, the general aesthetic of San Francisco just lends itself to uh, the best possible landscape yeah. for a restaurant. I think it's um, it's the place to be. Yeah, Northern California. It's the place to be. It's the place to be. <laughs> um, what is the mission of a chef for you? Uh, I think that changes with age. I think um, I think mainly it's based on education and culture. Mm -hmm. I think we have a responsibility to share with our guests the direction of good food and uh, how they should shop and what they should look for, as opposed to looking for reviews and glamour. Uh, I think we have a, a greater responsibility, yeah. and that's um, education. Uh, yeah. And I think the more you focus on that, the more rewarding it becomes. Can you tell us a bit about your network of farmers and producers here in San Francisco? We've been to the market with you this morning and you showed us some of your suppliers and introduced us to them. Yeah, can you tell us a little bit about this network? It was a beautiful market this morning. Um, I think the uh, the network of farmers has grown exponentially over the years. Mm -hmm. I think when we first started, it was a handful of people that I used to work with and known personally. Um, but over the months, as we're forced to develop new relationships, I think um, that family has grown exponentially. Yeah. And um, and now it's uh, it's amazing. It's uh, some of the best products I've ever seen, and it's from uh, numerous farmers uh, on multiple different levels. What makes it so special for you, this, the relationship that you have with these people? I think it's, uh, I think it's quite basic. You know? I think uh, farmers work extremely hard, and I think they, um, they often don't see a lot of the benefits of farming um, and often get like undercut. Yeah. I think in restaurants, I think we often work very hard. Um, and don't see a lot of those benefits as well. So I think teaming up together and supporting each other, they can bring us beautiful things. Yeah. And we can put money directly in their hands. There's no middleman. It's, um, it's really beautiful and you see it directly uh, when you support them. Yeah. So. Do you always know where the produce comes from? Do, they, do you actually talk to them about the, the regions or the how they produce, how they, their methods of producing? Is there this direct exchange conversation about how they produce? There is, often. And often they come to the restaurant 
I think it's really important for me uh, to share that with our staff. Our yeah. staff just takes it all in and they share it with our guests. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's amazing. And, and the further we know where our food comes from and what the farmers are doing, uh, I mean, it's, it just connects the whole circle. It, yeah. it, makes it, it makes it all completely whole. The yeah. staff really engages into it. Yeah. I think um, I think it's it's everyone wins. It completes yeah. that circle. Yeah. What's the toughest part of running a restaurant? <laughs> I, mean, um, I would say it's the staff. I think it's really simple to uh, execute a technique uh, repetitively, and it's predictable. Yeah. Um, people are challenging and. But also, I mean, it's some of the most rewarding uh, aspects of working in a restaurant is seeing people. It was my next question. <laughs> yeah, see, seeing people like come alive and then really kind of take uh, ownership of it. It's amazing. It's, um, yeah, I mean, but ultimately the most challenging. Yeah, it's yeah. hands down. Um, especially in San Francisco because uh, it's so expensive to live and um, people need their jobs. Yeah. But it's hard to negotiate what you need out of a job and and what you want from a job yeah, yeah so it's trying to balance that yeah today we bake bre bread together in your in your kitchen um what makes good bread in your opinion and can you tell us a little bit about the recipe that we that you share with, shared with us today of course um good bread in my eyes uh is the bread is so simple it's mostly our bread had a few more today. It's a unique yeah, recipe, yeah. but um, bread, it, there's nowhere to hide. So all of your ingredients are exposed. So for me, good bread is the best ingredients. And that's, uh, you know, the wheats, where they're sourced from. We mill the portion of wheat in house and cracking fresh whole wheat berries yeah. imparts so much flavor. Um, also uh, yeasts and any kind of other enrichments, all those items, uh, in total make for me some of the best bread yeah. uh, when you kind of balance those and you use good techniques and good baking or a good bake um, it's just kind of a culmination of all of that simplicity right? and it's yeah. so easy to mess the, all that up <laughs> so easy but um, when you get it just right you dial it in it's magical where do you find inspiration for your recipes I think inspiration comes from everywhere. Um, I mean, just walking through this park and seeing some of the stuff that we can go eat right now. Um, you know, you could write a whole recipe just to that. Yeah. I think recipes, inspiration, I mean, it comes, it comes from anywhere. You wake up in the middle of the night, you watch a terrible movie, yeah. um, you watch a great movie. Yeah. You have a conversation with a friend, you see a specific color, uh, you're freezing cold or you're sweating. Those are all inspirations, yeah. And it's also, um, for me, it's, a, it's very focused on like time and place. If, and it's the same kind of goes through my whole life. People ask me all the time, I go, what do you like to drink? It's like, well, what time of day it is? You know, uh, what, what's the celebration? Yeah. Um, so I think recipes for me are, are very much time and place. If it's very hot, I'm thinking something cool and refreshing. Right? So add to that a couple points of inspiration and all of a sudden, um, so this moment now, the way it looks, um, the way it feels, it's a bit cold, there's all the fog. What um, would this inspire you to create? What recipe would come out of a moment like this? I think um, being in the woods <laughs> always makes me think of something herbaceous yeah. and uh, vegetal. Uh, being chilly, I think it would be something warming, yeah. and also since we're walking and exercising so vigorously, maybe something lighter, like a warm soup with yeah. lots of greens. Um, but I mean, it's I could I could really have anything right now. Um, <laughs> uh, okay, and warm soup sounds definitely nice. <laughs> <laughs> that's the beauty of San Francisco because you drive ten minutes that way, and you probably want ceviche because it's so hot. Yeah. Um, so it's kind of like an open book. It's a a mix of many different things. Yeah. Like, do you have a genius tip in the kitchen that you can share with us? Very, something very simple. Yeah. Um, focus. <laughs> it's your kitchen. I tell my cooks all the time. I'm like, I don't, I don't care if you're hungover. I don't care if you cut your finger. 
I do care, but um, just just be present. Just be focused. When you cook, you have to be focused. You have to be present. And you have to understand what you're doing. Because if the flame is a little too high or a little too low, yeah. if the time is a minute too long or a minute too short, and you're not present, and you can't see those things, yeah. you have a completely different result. And that's the simplicity that you'll miss. So you just have to be focused. Yeah. And that's so important. If you could choose one person to cook a meal for you, who and what would it be? Ooh. It's a tough one. Um, it, it's a dish that I wasn't particularly fond of, but it's more of the memory. Yeah. It was a uh, celebra celebratory dish that was prepared for us uh, on our engagement in Kyoto. And it's a red rice dish. Yeah. And, um, It was nothing uh, spectacular about it. It was more about just the experience and the mood. Um, and there's a restaurant in San Francisco called Kusakabe, um, which is one of our favorites. Uh, and they did that dish for us upon our return to San Francisco from Japan. And again, it wasn't, it's not designed to be um, amazingly delicious. It's yeah. very simple. It's red rice uh, with a few other ingredients. Um, But it's just the uh, like that those kind of examples in food are so scarce because how often do you celebrate with food almost daily but how often do you celebrate a marriage or a yeah. funeral or you know I mean it's food like that is so powerful not because it's delicious because of its meaning and I think that's very rare. You prefer to celebrate with more simple dishes, the special moment, to sit uh, there with an amazing bottle of wine, your amazing bread, and some olive oil, and that's it. Yes. Many times we'll just grab a sack of oysters and a bottle of champagne and sit in the woods, you know. Like it's yeah. I don't I don't really need much more than that. Um, it's uh it, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. And in your own kitchen at home, do you prefer to cook on your own or together with others? Uh, I think the best part of being in the kitchen is with friends and family. Yeah. Um, or someone you don't know at all. Yeah. I think that's just That's the community of the kitchen. It's a community of food. Everyone eats. Everyone likes to talk about it. Everyone comes yeah. together uh, over food. Yeah. And to be in the kitchen with everyone and doing something, and sharing, and that's that's what it's all about. Yeah. Would you never cook again? Well, uh, I don't know if I can answer that. That's that's pretty tough. Um, Yeah, I mean, there's yeah. I mean, there's always been uh, disasters in the kitchen. You know, everything goes wrong. What was your biggest disaster? The biggest kitchen disaster. I mean, we we've run out of food at, at events. We we burned everything. I mean, everything everything comes crashing down. Yeah. Everything. Yeah. Often, but it's about like how you recover from that and like what is the end result. Yeah. In my younger days, the, the recovery was not so gracious, uh, but. I don't know if I'd necessarily never cook a meal again. I'd probably take another shot at it. But uh, everybody says Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's just like you grow so much when you cook over years and years and years. You grow so much. Yeah. So to have another opportunity to revisit those prior experiences, I think yeah. anybody would take advantage of it. Yeah. yeah. I think uh, it's just a good opportunity. Thank you very much. You're welcome. <laughs> Continue to work over the